You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show where we talk all about audio analytics with Azure Automated Machine Learning. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI show where we're talking all about audio analytics with Azure Automated Machine Learning. And I've got a special guest. Welcome back, Serge. Why don't you introduce yourself, my friend? Hello, Seth. Comment ça va? Tout va bien. Tout va bien. Tout va bien, tout va bien. Okay, so thank you, Seth, for your uh, your time. And I have the privilege to be here today to talk a little bit about uh, audio analytics. Mm -hmm. But just uh, some uh, words about uh, my activities. So I'm working for Microsoft France. I am based in Paris. I am part of an EMEA team dedicated to computer vision. And I'm very excited to be present today with you. Mm. So you were on before where we did some stuff with images. I remember it was like capturing fire and other cool stuff. But now we're going to talk about audio. Is, is that right? Yes, that's correct. We we did a recording in December about AutoML for images on some specific use cases for image classification, object detection, or instance segmentation. And we saw all that uh, in December. But today we will switch uh, to audio. We will not talk anymore about images and we will see how we can leverage audio files for classification. And the thing is that even if now we are dealing with audio files, with sounds, we will be able to use uh, computer vision uh, techniques for classification, for audio classification. And this is uh, what we would like to, uh, to to present today with you and to discuss about any use cases we can have on this domain. So I brought your slides up, but the thing is, so what you're saying, and if I'm hearing this right, correct me if I'm wrong, Serge, you're saying that we did the image stuff before, but you're saying there's a way to make audio into images so that we can do it the same thing again. Am I getting this right? Exactly, uh, that's correct. So oh. the thing is how to switch from audio file. It can be a music file. It can be the sound coming from an equipment, for uh, for example. Whatever, any sound file, we will see how we can take an audio file and to have an image. And when and then when we will have a collection of images coming from audio files we will be able to build and train a custom vision model to predict. Okay, so I wanna see how that magic works. I'm, I'm looking at Mr. Fourier here. I, I'm, I'm guessing that has something to do with how we're gonna do it. Why don't you dive in? Exactly, so uh, Fourier made uh, a long time ago, as you can see, a specific uh, transformation called Fast Fourier Transform or FFT. And FFT is just a way to convert a signal from the time domain to the frequency domain. What does it mean? If you have a look at this slide, you will see um, a sound visualization over time. Okay, so you have time and amplitude. Okay, so this is the usual amplitude uh, plot if you have any audio file. The FFT is there to switch from time to frequency. And the good thing with frequency is that we will be able to see if a sound is much more with bass sound, medium sounds, or treble sounds. And then it's a good idea to uh, switch from the time domain to the frequency domain using FFT. I see. So, and, and again, you're smarter than this than I am. Basically, sound is a wave. That's a bunch of waves that are added together. And what the what the frequency we're, we're changing from one domain to the frequency domain. Is that right? Correct. The good thing is that we don't have time anymore. We have frequency, so it's good to be able to uh, qualify a sound. The bad thing is that we don't have time anymore because we have frequency. Okay, but nice. we will see next how to combine. At the same time, in a single image, time, decibel, and frequency. Okay? I see. So we're separating all the sound waves out. 
We're plotting the frequency. We're getting numbers for frequencies that are all added together. And then we're going to plot that as an image over time. Am I getting it right? That's it. That's correct. So mm -hmm. let's have a look. Let's take a so look. So this is pretty, pretty nice, in fact. OK. Mm -hmm. What you can see is time. OK. What you can see is uh, the frequencies. And the color will depend on the decibel. And this is a spectrogram. Spectrogram represent how the spectrum of frequencies will vary over time. Okay, and what you can see at the moment is just an image. Yeah, it is an image that will describe uh, the sound. So think about one use case. You have multiple sounds coming from an equipment, for example, and sometimes you can have some issues with an equipment, like an anomaly. Okay, mm -hmm. and if you can take some sounds, some samples of the sound of an equipment or, or, of a, or coming from a machine, then you can compute and you can save this as a spectrogram. And if you can do this many times, you will have a collection of images, okay? And then you can use computer vision techniques to predict something. And something can be, for example, an anomaly detection, okay? That's clever. So you might have, and, and so now you're getting into the actual application. You may have machinery that's running and there's, when it makes normal sounds, the spectrogram looks like this. When it makes not normal sounds, the spectrogram looks like this. And you can make a machine learning model to predict if something is, doesn't sound right to send an alert kind of thing. Is that what we're exactly. getting at? Exactly. So it's a, it will be in this example a two class classification uh, problem mm -hmm. and of course if you can detect anomaly then we will be able to send an alert uh, and um, and then you can do something in order to uh, uh, to to validate uh, if there is uh, something wrong uh, coming from your uh, your predictive model so this is a, a very interesting to see how we can switch from audio to images. Like, I feel like I want to look at some code now on how, because I, I think we under, I think we're getting the con, well, at least I, I think I'm getting the concept, but I want to see some code on how you actually do that conversion and then put it into automated machine learning. Yeah, sure. So let's have a look at uh, some, uh, some code. So uh, first, maybe we can have a quick demo about, uh, Let's have fun first uh, Let's about do it. Mu music classification. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, I don't know if you are listening to music, but there are many kind of music for sure. Mm -hmm. Classical music. Uh, you can listen to uh, rock, country music, jazz, blues, heavy metal, hard rock, uh, whatever. Okay? okay. So uh, what I would like to do is to build a classification model using spectrograms in order to classify an audio file okay so is it uh, a, um, is it a, a pop uh, song is it is it a rock is it about a classical music is it about heavy metal whatever okay so the first step obviously is to have a collection of uh, music somewhere okay and I, I, I'm going to use uh, some Python code for that. And as, a, as I told you before, let's have a look. Okay. So let's say you have a new, uh, an audio file. Of course, you can, uh, you can display a, a, blues, a, a blues song, for example, using uh, this kind of graph. Okay. So this is the usual graph. You can see over time the amplitude of the signal. Okay. Then. We can use the famous Fourier transformation to switch from time to frequency. Okay, so let's do it. And this is the FFT plot. Okay, on my song, it's a blues song. Okay, as you can see, uh, it's close less than 2000 Hertz, maybe 4000, and not so much. Okay, so it's just one way to describe the audio song okay I and see. then we can build the spectrogram okay 
Can so, we scroll? Can we scroll up a second? I want to make sure I understand. Let's go go to this other chart. So basically, this chart says here's all the frequencies that we have, and here is the magnitude of the frequency, like how loud it was. Yes. Okay. okay. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. And uh, keep in mind that uh, as a human, we can hear between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Okay? okay. This is our capabilities. Cats and dogs, they can hear a little bit more, up to four, uh, 40,000. And dolphins, for example, much more. As a human, we cannot hear ultrasounds or infrasounds, OK? But anyway, uh, this, is, uh, and this is our range, OK? So just a quick way to switch to the domain, uh, to the frequency domain. As we saw before, now let's go to the spectrogram. The good thing with this plot is that we have frequencies, but the bad thing is that we don't have time anymore. Okay? Yeah. And spectrogram is just a way to combine frequencies and time at the same time. Okay? I so, and, ma and magnitude, right? And because magnitude. Color. Yes. Okay, cool. So what I did, yeah, so this is a spectrogram. It's a 30 second songs, as you can see. This is time. You have frequencies, okay? And you have decibels there. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's not so loud. Sometimes it can be very loud, or not so much here in this example, but m much m louder, okay? And it just, in one graph, you can describe a song. So in this case, this song has louder bass tones because the frequency is lower that's uh, correct and, and because that's the okay cool yeah that's correct. Okay. But this, this is not enough this is not enough because we need to switch to a different scale uh, because as a human uh, we can tell the difference between 500 and 1000 hertz okay? okay but we cannot tell the difference between 10,000 and 10,000 and 500 hertz okay even if the difference is the same, okay? So for that, there is a specific scale called the male scale. It was made a long time ago, as you can see, okay? And it's just one way to change the, uh, the, the scale, okay? And then this is the final spectrogram I will use. Oh, I see. So basically what you're doing is you're taking a linear scale and because you're trying to make the computer sense how we sense, you're putting that scale into that logarithmic uh, flattening scale to what we hear. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So okay. this is uh, this is uh, the male spectrogram uh, function for that, okay? And what we can do as well is to create a chromogram. What is a chromogram? Okay, this is the same song, the 30 second blues song. Okay, and now we have the usual scale C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. Okay, uh -huh. so you can have all the pitch. Okay, and you can say maybe this song was in C and then it switched to G and then it switched to A sharp or whatever. Okay. So yes. that's another way to uh, to have uh, music uh, visual the uh, visual visualization. Right. But now let's switch to spectrogram. Okay. Cool. So this is just one spectrogram for one file. What I did in this uh, notebook is that I made just a simple Python function. So that's my Python function. Uh -huh. to generate spectrograms in batch mode, okay? So it will take all the files from a directory and we generate for each of them a spectrogram file. And I'm going to save all the files into a JPEG file format. Got it. So it will pick up each file, okay, using the Librosa Python library for that. Mm -hmm. And then it will create the male spectrogram, the one we saw before, Okay, and then we are going to display it and to save it into a JPEG file. 
So it's like okay. pre-processing audio data, but converting yes. it to images. And I will do it for all my blues song, all my classical song, all my country, disco, hip hop, jazz, metal, and so on. Okay. Yep. And then I'm going to use AutoML for images because I have my collection of spectrum images. Okay. I don't want to spend too much time on about AutoML for images because we saw that previously. Sure. But it's always the same story. I mean, uh, I'm going to uh, to create a GPU compute uh, cluster for that in order to build and train my model. Okay, it's all running on Azure with Azure Machine Learning, of course. Uh, now uh, I, I can create uh, an Azure Machine Learning experimentation. I have my collection of uh spectrograms for uh, each of my blues songs classical country disco and so on mm -hmm. and this is just one sample okay this is another sample so that one was for a rock song and that one maybe for classical song okay i'm going to load all my images and i'm going to uh to use auto ml for images using this model for example okay and now I am able to build and train a model and to deploy it on, on the cloud. And uh, at the end, okay, it just took three minutes to deploy mm. it into uh, Azure Kubernetes services. That's cool. And, and now let's have a look, let's test, okay? So now I have my model, it's running, it was deployed on, on Azure, I am able to 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 play with it a little bit okay. let's see if it works so let's have a look let's run uh, some things okay so my my model is should be available soon okay and... right, right right now you're basically loading up the because you created you went from auto ml to a model automated machine learning to a model to a model that's been deployed and now you're going to test that model am, am i getting this right Yes, exactly. So uh, I took uh, all my spectrogram images. I was able to uh, to uh, use them in order to build and train my my uh, my model. And now uh, and now I am ready to uh, to uh, to play a song. So let's have a look at this song. Okay, it's a song. Uh, it's an open source song, so there is no copyright issues, whatever, of course. Right. It's available on YouTube, and let's hear it. Yes, we. this is a very famous song. Okay, so it's from Handel, and yeah, uh, it's available there. Okay, so I can, okay, so I can describe from YouTube some in some metadata. Okay, it's copyright free classical music, so I can use it, okay. I can download, I can hear the sound. Okay, so I have the sound of my uh, on my storage account. It's a classical song for sure. And I can display the wave plot. Okay. Nice. I can display the famous spectrogram. And then nice. I can call my model to make the prediction. Okay. It took less than one second. Okay. And let's display something classical wow it was completely sure of itself <laughs> it was pretty sure close to 100 percent okay not a rock song for sure it's, it's not, not about uh heavy metal okay it's about classical and uh i can display it okay so classical is close to one and uh, and you can have a nice uh, plot if you want okay so it's classical with close to 100 okay 100 percent of confidence this I is have really another so what do you think? I, I think this is this is really cool. I think the thing for me that's that's awesome is I I'm a computer vision guy. Not like you know I don't see the future, but I love doing computer vision kind of stuff. And it's cool how you can go from audio to vision and still yeah. have it work almost literally exactly the same way. Yeah, and uh, I have a blues song. Maybe we can hear. Let's do it. So maybe I need to run. Okay, so it was a blues song and uh, same thing. Okay, same thing. And prediction was blues. Okay, 
And what's cool is that blues and jazz, I, I'm, I'm a music guy, blues and jazz have similar roots. And so the fact that that would be the second one is kind of cool, even though it's yeah. like very sure it's not it. it but it, there's a there's a hint of jazz in that blues song. No, right? that's right. And it's not an easy uh, an easy thing because sometimes when you listen to some music, it can have some part of hard rock and pop music in it or maybe uh, uh, with additional things. So it's not very easy to uh, predict the genre, the genre, uh, uh, kind of music. But in this example, uh, it was definitely a blues song. And as you said, sometimes it can be close to jazz. Uh, there is no uh, classical in it or no hip hop for sure. OK, but that's it. And I have some samples. That one was a jazz song. And the prediction was, uh, in this case, same thing, OK? Just for sure. And the last one was an heavy metal song. And prediction, let's go to the end, OK? While it says a little bit of rock, for heavy metal, it's quite, sometimes it can be close, OK? Uh, and uh, sounds good. And uh, yes, and the prediction was close to 80%. This is this is really cool, and I, I I know this this the time goes fast when we hang out. Uh, Serge, can, is there places where people can go and find these things? Yes, uh, uh, I, I will share the, with uh, I will share the the notebook and all the Python code in one of my repo as soon as possible, so people will be able to have a look at my GitHub repo. And to so to so all the materials, so they can they can use uh, this uh, on uh, their project. Uh, so it was about music, just to have fun. But of course, uh, think about predictive maintenance based on the sound coming from a machine or an equipment, and you can do exactly the same thing. Okay, this is cool. and and this is what I did. Same story for anomaly detection. We have many products for anomaly detection in Azure based on uh, uh, CSV files or uh, database management system information. Uh, but the goal is then to use the sound to transform the sound into images through spe spectrograms and then to build a, a classification model. And I can maybe we can have a quick look. So it's a demo I made uh, using the sound of my washing machine. OK, <laughs> cool. OK, so uh, let's have a look. So. Yeah, okay. like so this machine. is my washing machine and it's working perfectly. OK, there is no, no, no additional noise, as you can hear. OK, that's it. So and then I can generate the wave plot. Same thing, the spectrogram. Okay, and I'm going to call the model I made, and the model says, okay, okay, no sound anomaly, 71%, and I have a, a, a dashboard that say no sound anomaly detected. Okay, right. okay. Now let's hear to this song, which is another one. It's my washing machine, but there is an additional noise. Maybe you can hear it. Yes. Yeah. OK, so the click, maybe it's something coming from the engine, which is not uh, not, uh, not usual. Good. OK, yeah. and you can hear the click. OK, you can see it from here. There is something wrong. You can see it from the spectrogram. Can you see that line? I see it. That line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is an additional noise here. Okay, and what is the the prediction of the model? It says, or maybe I can run it. Okay, so let's run this and this and this and this prediction. It says there is a sound anomaly. Okay, sound anomaly detected, and uh, I made uh, I sent a notification to Teams. And Tim said, today, sound anomaly has been detected on this file. That's with so 77. Cool. And then I can reply and I can say, OK, 
we will check the equipment. So think about a customer who can uh, who can generate automatic alerts when something is going wrong on a, or on a machine, on, on a motor equipment, whatever. For predictive maintenance, it can be great. But you can use the same techniques for many things, for smarter cities, for example, okay? Mm -hmm. Because you can detect gunshots or people who are crying or whatever. And uh, I really think that the sound will be the next gen generation of predictive models. This, this is really cool. Now, you gave me some links. I want to make sure we put them up. Here's the first link. Uh, uh, Azure uh, auto, Automated Machine Learning, if you want to learn about that. We did a little bit of work on that last time, and we saw how it transfers over from sound to images. Uh, we have this one also that has some of the, the algorithms that are in there. And then the last one, I think, is the tutorial uh, link. And then obviously all the stuff that you have will be available as well. Is that right, Serge? Yes, everything, all the notebook will be available with all the images, all the sounds, whatever. So everybody will be able to uh, to replay all the notebooks. Well, you're an absolute star. Thank you so much for being with us, Serge. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup et à très bientôt. À vous. À bientôt, à vous. À uh, bientôt, thank you so much. We've been learning all about audio analytics with Azure Automated Machine Learning here on the AI Show. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care.